So the first thing I do is take a look at the pattern and see what this knit speak is and see if I can translate it into English. C O 18, okay? Row 1, R S S L 1, T 2, Y O S S K. When you have a chance to just to sit and knit, the fiber is going through your fingers and you're creating something. Maybe you're creating a gift, and as you knit, you're knitting your intentions into that gift. And at the same time, you're getting the gift of feeling that fiber in your hands and, and making something that's really tangible. So this, is, this was the first time this little sheep was sheared, and so its fleece is really soft and curly, and it's sticky and uneven. And, but once you card it and fluff it out a bit, it's like this cloud. It's just this wonderful cloud of wool. I thought about what knitting does for me, and I want to be able to share that with people, so I started teaching. And what I found was that people learned the skills really easily. But the problem is that once they get to the point where they want to make something particular, like a sweater, they buy the yarn, and they buy the book, and they buy the pattern, and then they come back and say, I know how to do all this stuff, but I can't read this pattern. It's knit speak to me. There are a lot of us who just need a little bit of help. And for beginners, it's that translation of, these are the skills I learned, but what does it look like on paper? And if I only knew what K2 TBL meant, maybe I could go on to the next part of this. And so the book is really useful for getting people unstuck. The yarn and the knitting can be a real connection because so many people knit. You get a chance to speak with people in a different way. Um, you get a chance to talk about what's in common, what you make, what you like to make, what kind of yarn you use, uh, when you learned, who you learned from. And I often ask people those questions because it's really, it's important where we get our feeling of rootedness and connection to people.